today we're driving the new Volvo S90. This is a T8 all-wheel drive recharge inscription. Quite a mouthful, but also quite a car. This is Volvo's full-size luxury sedan. MSRP on this starts a little over $60,000. This one is spec to a little over $70,000. It has a 4C suspension, a climate package, a few other options. We'll put everything in the description. It has a T8 powertrain, which means it has a supercharged and turbocharged inline four-cylinder engine that makes 313 horsepower. And then in the back, we have an electric motor that makes 87 horsepower for a combined output of 400 horsepower, and uh, it's all-wheel drive. So, pretty nice powertrain. You can go about 20, 22 miles or so on full electric power in this. So it is a plug-in hybrid. Not many other options in this price point for full-size luxury sedans that you can plug in and drive on electricity. It's very luxurious inside. We have a Bowers and Wilkins sound system and a beautiful, beautiful Scandinavian design language throughout this Volvo. They've done some redesigning and refreshing for this 2021 model year. And I think this new S90 looks really good. Not a lot of changes really on the inside, but on the outside they've Revise the front grille and front bumper and rear fascia, stuff like that. So just a mild refresh. Um, I'm noticing immediately this infotainment is a little bit quicker, a little bit res more responsive. The uh, autopilot is a little bit better tuned and calibrated for the road. So a few little updates to this S90. It's been a while since we've been in one of these and we haven't driven an S90 yet with this new T8 plug-in hybrid powertrain. We've got a massive panoramic sunroof loads of legroom and space in their back seats, rear climate control. This is just a gorgeous interior. I am so proud of Volvo for what they are doing with their interiors these days. We have this cool uh, crystal shift knob here that has kind of a funky action. You have to press it to go to different gears for neutral, reverse, drive. Uh, you get kind of used to it. It has a park button. Weird at first, but once you use it for a couple days, actually quite nice because you have a pretty good idea of what gear you're selecting. Uh, same big touchscreen, a lot of stuff. All your settings are right in here. Not a lot of physical controls and buttons. At first, it's a bit of a learning curve, but then you get used to it. And uh, I like that Volvo has continued to make this a more responsive system. Once you get your settings, everything set up, it's okay. It's kind of almost borderline too much, especially for Volvo. This S90 has this beautiful open pour wood finish and what they call a tailored dash. Look at this line, it's so sharp, so sleek. Love the finishing to the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. These speaker grills, everything in here is just top notch. I love the leather, the seats are very comfortable. You have a lot of adjustability with these seats. You can control the massaging feature, side bolsters, lumbar, cushion extension, all with these buttons down here on the side and the bottom. In the back seats, we have a lot of space, just cavernous back here. I remember in previous generation Volvos when there just wasn't a lot of rear seat room. Well, that's no longer the case in any of their models, really. They've really made improvements with that. They've got a small little, I don't know what this is, ashtray, something, place to put stuff. A little privacy screen, very nice, very svelte. Rear climate vents couple of USB-C ports and your rear climate controls with a center seat and armrest in the up position it impedes visibility quite a bit but when you put it down it looks a lot better and solves that problem you get a couple of cup holders right here and a tiny little thin storage space for an iPad or something like that tablet what have you very nice place to be five foot ten I can pretty much extend my legs behind my own seating position I just love this interior. It is very nice. Let's take a look in the trunk. Got a little button right here over under the L. Trunk lid raises automatically. Pretty good amount of space. You've got a small pass through there in the middle, I believe. You have a couple of different cubbies here and here to put things. This is the charging cable and all those accessories. Underneath you have a flat tire repair kit and that's all electric motor and battery right there. You have a couple options to close the tailgate. You can close it and lock it, which is very nice if you're just leaving and going about your business after getting something out of the car, or just lower it with the push of a button. I do really like the way this S90 looks. They've made some little subtle tweaks to the rear end. 
very sharp. And of course, the reason you would buy an S90 versus a V90, just a little bit quieter, not the wagon style. You're gonna get some more isolation on the road because you don't have that open rear hatch area. And uh, this is probably one of the more comfortable and quiet Volvos on sale uh, that they've ever made. So let's take it on the road, find out how it drives, and uh, give you guys an idea of what this is like to drive in hybrid mode, in full EV mode, all the things. Before we get started with our drive today, I would like to mention our sponsor, Phantom Wallet. They make slim, minimalist wallets. This is the Phantom R with a carbon fiber finish, and you can add a bunch of attachments onto the back. You can bolt on a money clip, uh, lots of different options for this Phantom R. This is the key holder, so I can kind of keep everything I need all in one place. You have credit card holders that splay out, you have a bunch of different options for Lots of cards, a few cards, uh, whether you carry money or not, you can add a money clip. There are a bunch of other coin holder attachments, various other accessories. Feels good in hand, very well made, easy to use on a daily basis. If you guys are interested in upping your wallet game or switching things up, be sure to use the discount code TOFER for 10% off your order at checkout on phantomwallet.com. I'll put a link in the description. So just sitting here in the parking lot, you'll notice that this is completely silent. The engine is off. We are in hybrid mode. And the readout is giving me about 23 miles of estimated battery only range. We have a couple different options. We can hold our battery, charge our battery with the engine. It kicks on and gives you more juice for later on if you want to use it. Um, I think let's just set off and hybrid mode and see how that does. We've got a few different drive modes, pure eco drive, constant all wheel drive, hybrid, individual and power. And uh, hybrid will give you this little slider here where it indicates at what throttle position you will tap into the gasoline mode. If you stay under this much acceleration, you will stay in hybrid driving mode. That'll give you 87 horsepower from that rear motor. And if you go past that little lightning bolt, you'll get into the gasoline droplet. The engine will kick on and you know, you'll know that way that you'll be driving in hybrid mode. So uh, kind of cool. You can go into pure and have only EV driving mode until your battery runs out. But let's start off in hybrid and see what that's like. We've done a lot of videos recently on various Volvo products, especially these T8 powertrains. They all seem to drive about the same, and there's a lot of consistency between the Volvo lineup, which I think is kind of nice. In my experience, I grew up with Volvos. I had a Volvo family, and if I know Volvo owners, they tend to buy multiple Volvos. There's not just one in the household. And uh, that way you can just get out of one and get into the other Volvo, and it's a very familiar place, which I think is kind of nice. This interior feels very nice and luxurious and premium for the price point. So I give it just a little bit more gas there. The engine kicked on. It's very quiet. It's very silent. And the transition between electric motor and a gasoline engine is very smooth. Volvo seems to have smoothed that out just a little bit compared to the XC60 T8 Polestar that I drove a little while ago. Getting on the highway, we're still in hybrid mode. A lot of torque from this engine. But you're very well isolated in here. Not a lot of wind noise, not a lot of sounds coming into the cabin from other cars. And it's pretty darn quick. I actually, this week, have been driving mostly in B regenerative braking mode, which off throttle gives you just a little bit of deceleration and charges that battery some more. You can almost one pedal drive in B mode if you really plan out your braking zones. Let's go into power, see what this is like to drive around some corners. Immediately I notice the steering is a lot sharper and stiffer, the ride quality has stiffened up a bit. We've got a tachometer, a rev counter, instead of a slider for uh, our battery and engine usage. Handling is excellent for a long wheelbase luxury sedan. That slightly stiffer suspension comes into play around the corners. Volvo's been doing a really good job with their chassis dynamics lately. This new S90 strikes a really nice balance between fun to drive, sharp feeling, and luxurious. Let's 
fun to play around with these drive modes too. Let's go into pure eco drive mode. You can only engage this mode when the battery has charge left in it. And we're only getting 87 horsepower out of this. It's enough to get it up to speed. I think you could stick with traffic up to about 50, 55 miles per hour pretty easily. Beyond that, it tends to get a little bit sluggish. This is a, a lot of vehicle to haul around with only 87 horsepower to the rear wheels. That's full throttle right there. I love all of the inputs. The steering is just phenomenal. The brake pedal feels nice and tight. Let's go back into power mode, see if we can grab a couple turns in this entrance ramp. Just a wonderful chassis. I'd be curious to see what this feels like compared to the S90 without the 4C adaptive suspension. I know everyone's gonna ask, is that an option worth checking? Can't quite be sure without comparing apples to apples. I think this dynamically feels great. It strikes a really nice balance between ride and handling. Overall, I really like the way this S90 drives. It just does a really good job delivering an engaging and pleasant and relaxing driving experience. It's always a bit more fun gamifying the electric hybrid driving experience, getting those MPGs up on that little readout down there. I've been averaging around mid 40s all week. This is rated for, uh, I believe it's 60 MPG E and 30 miles to the gallon in hybrid driving mode combined. Your true fuel economy in this car will vary greatly depending on your use. If you're only driving 20 miles a day or 40 miles a day, you get pretty impressive fuel economy in this car. And the fact that it doesn't have a huge battery, it doesn't take long to charge up, means that you can make some short trips mostly on pure electric power. Every now and then the engine does need to kick on to run accessories like the air conditioning or the heat or something like that. But for the most part, it's almost a pure electric driving experience. On the highway, in pure mode, we can get up to about 80 miles an hour or so on pure electricity before we run out, completely run out of acceleration. You absolutely need more power. You just dip into that full throttle, that second part of the pedal, and uh, it'll put you back into the hybrid driving mode. So one of the big selling points for me with Volvos has always been their pilot assist their highway driving system with radar guided cruise control and lane keeping assist. So uh, really nice system. I can feel that they've made some improvements. It works very well on the highway, on side streets, back roads, two lane roads. It's okay. Uh, not maybe as good as some of the other systems, but really this is a, this is a driving assistance feature that really should only be used on the highway. I think that's where it excels the most. You can easily switch between pilot assist and just standard adaptive cruise control just by pressing right or left on these cruise control buttons right here. Super intuitive, easy to use system. One press changes your speed by five mile an hour increments and if you hold, you can tweak one mile an hour up and down from there. I really like how easy it is to engage, disengage. One thing with these systems is sometimes they will you know, stray you off into this side or you come into a little bit of traffic and you want to slow down and have complete control of the car, it's very easy to take control of this pilot assist system. Uh, and I think that's very important because these systems are not ready yet or even close to being fully autonomous. And the fact that you can regain control easily without having to press a bunch of buttons, turn off steering assist, all these different things is awesome. I like that a lot. This Volvo gives you a pretty good following distance too. And one thing I've noticed that's new with the system is that as soon as you turn your turn signal on to pass the slower vehicle, it'll start accelerating, which is great. Doesn't make this pilot assist system feel sluggish on the highway. Let's 
put us back into power mode, so if we can chase down one more good corner on this entrance ramp. You can manually select gears by pressing minus right and left on the shifter here. Kind of a strange experience, but no paddle shifters. Feels good around a corner. So, how can we sum up this S90 T8 Inscription Recharge? Not in that order, but something like that. How can we sum up this new S90? I think it's a really nice overall luxury car. For the price, you are going to struggle to do any better with the German competitors. And uh, I think this offers a lot. You've got all of your niceties, all of your luxuries, all of your comforts that you would expect in a sixty to $70,000 vehicle. And the fact that this is a plug-in hybrid powertrain makes it just a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more nice to live with. And uh, it's cool to see that high mile per gallon number down there. And the fact that you get over 450 miles of fuel range from a tank in this, just on gasoline power only, makes this a really nice road trip, highway cruiser, long distance vehicle. For everyday use, shorter journeys, the hybrid powertrain, the plug-in nature of this, with that rear electric motor, I think makes this a fantastic daily driver. You have all the luxuries and comforts that you would need, heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel, automatic windshield wipers, uh, excellent headlights, an amazing Bowers and Wilkins sound system. This has really nice driving dynamics, rides pretty well, hits a lot of marks. Volvo's done a really nice job with this S90. I would say this is probably the most luxurious Volvo on sale today. I mean, it may seem obvious, but the NVH in here is a little bit better than the wagons just because you have a trunk and you're isolated from that open area in the back as opposed to the V90. Any complaints? Well, every now and then there's a little bit of a rough hiccup when you're transitioning between electric motor and gasoline motor, uh, but for the most part, it's a pretty smooth driving experience. If you're not hustling this thing around, hammering on it, it's uh, almost an unnoticeable transition. I think uh, Volvo has made a lot of improvements with the ergonomics and the, well, mostly just the touchscreen speed in this car, and I commend them on that. I think the user-friendly nature of this car is, it's definitely a learning curve. It takes some getting used to. I've spent a lot of time in Volvo's the last few years, and I'm I'm just kind of starting to warm up to it. It's kind of on the edge. I would like more physical controls and buttons, but honestly, once you get all your settings set and everything done to your preferences, it's okay to live with. Um, I really like the cruise control system. I love how easy that is to engage and disengage and, and use on a daily basis. This car is just a really nice vehicle to daily drive and live with and use. Um, a lot of complexity, a lot of technology here. A lot of things that uh, I'm not sure I would want to deal with out of warranty, but that said, it delivers a really nice driving experience. And I think uh, living with something like this every day, walking up to it, the whole just kind of feel of this car and the way it makes you feel is, uh, is very nice. And I think there's something to be said about having a Volvo that's a little bit more unassuming and less showy than some of the German rivals. Uh, I think it's just, I think it's cool. I like Volvos. I'm totally biased. So take that for whatever you will. But overall, a really nice change to this new S90. I like this facelift. Looks great. Let's walk you around it one more time and show you that front end and rear bumper. Great color too. We'll put all the details on this car in the description. New wheels also. Yeah, just a gorgeous face on this. Volvo came out with some concept cars about a decade ago, and I like that their production models are shifting in that direction. Very sleek luxury sedan. All right, guys, well, that'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. If you need a new wallet, check out phantomwallet.com and use the discount code TOFER, pretty easy to remember. And stay tuned on the Winding Road Magazine YouTube channel and the Daily Motor YouTube channel for more videos on this Volvo S90. We'll be posting a uh, POV day drive, maybe a POV night drive too. 
lots more content to come on this car. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.